Are you struggling to understand all the jargon surrounding motherboards, AM4 this, PCIe that, or X57C B450? There's so much information to know, and for many, it's not all that clear. So in this video, I want to give you a good sort of understanding of, well, motherboards, specifically their chipsets, sockets, and ports, and ideally with as little pre-existing knowledge as possible. So let's start with the main bit, the relationship between the socket, the bit your CPU goes in, and the chip set, the bit that lets your CPU talk to the rest of the motherboard, and is normally a large part of a motherboard's name, so for example MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. Now like I said, the socket is the bit that lets you put your CPU into it, and you'll need to make sure that you have the right socket on your board for your CPU. If you want an AMD Ryzen CPU, you want a socket called AM4, whereas if you want an Intel, say i9-19900K, then you want a socket called LGA1151. The chipset, on the other hand, is, like I said, the bit that lets your CPU talk to the rest of the motherboard. Normally stuff like your hard drives and USB ports, but it can vary depending on the configuration. Now chipsets are normally generational based on the generation of CPU you want to buy, and while some are cross compatible, you will need to check the motherboard you want's manufacturer website and check the compatibility list on there to make sure the CPU you have or your CPU you want to buy is listed as specifically compatible because sometimes they can use the same sockets, but they're not directly compatible. Now let's talk through a few of the sockets you might find on modern boards. The first is AM4. Like I said, this is for AMD's Ryzen and Athlon series CPUs and is what's called a PGA or pin grid array socket because on the back of the CPU there is a whole load of pins in a grid array, in fact 1331 of them to be precise, and that slots into the holes in the socket which allows it to connect to the motherboard. Now AMD does have older versions of this socket, uh, they're called AM3, M3+, AM2, and FM2, FM2+, that kind of thing, but those sockets are for older series of CPUs and are not cross compatible as they are actually different sizes with different numbers of pins and different blocking bits in the way as well. Now Intel have their own style, it's called LGA or Land Grid Array and that's because on the back of the CPU it's as flat as Holland and all of the pins are in the socket. Now depending on which chip you're buying and which socket you're buying will vary the number of pins in the socket and the general size of it. So like I said, if you're buying a 1900K or KS or 9600K for example, then you'd be looking at buying an 11, a 1151 pin socket or an LGA 1151. Whereas if you're buying their more high-end desktop processors, you will be looking at an LGA 2011 for the really early ones or 20 66 for the slightly newer ones, or if you're even more insane and going for their Xeon style CPUs, then you'll be looking at the LGA 3647 socket, which is absolutely massive. And honestly, if you're watching this video, it's kind of unlikely that you're going to be building that, so don't worry too much. Now, AMD do also use the LGA style sockets for their high end desktop and server CPUs, and they call them the STRX4 and the older TR4 sockets, and those are absolutely massive for the absolutely massive chips that go in them. So that's the sockets, but what about the chipsets? Well, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. See, there's often a number of different chipsets that support the same socket. So for example, AMD's AM4 sockets technically has seven chipsets that are currently supported, although in the sort of current generation, there's only two main chipsets, the X570, the higher end, more enthusiast style platform, and then the B450 chipset, which is more budget oriented. Now, it's kind of complicated between which one you should go for. Uh, there is a few feature differences between the two. X570 has PCIe Gen 4 support, which we're gonna talk about what that means in a second. And B450 is generally a overall better option for most people. And generally speaking, if you're gonna be buying an AM4 motherboard, if you're unsure where, what to go for, a B450 board, specifically something like an MSI B450 Tomahawk Max, is a fantastic option, and it's gonna be pretty much right for you 99% of the time. On the Intel side, it's even more complicated, as Intel has a very broken up structure. Now, the same principle applies that there are 
are multiple versions of chipsets for the same socket. Uh, Intel has a slightly different naming scheme, so their Z lineup of motherboards, so the current generation is Z390. Those are the enthusiast boards, those are the boards that let you overclock your unlocked CPU, whereas their H and B series motherboards currently or generally don't let you overclock even if you have an unlocked CPU. So do keep that in mind. Most people who are buying Intel uh, CPUs right now would buy a Z390 board. So generally speaking, that's where you should be looking. Now, if you're buying one of their more high-end processors, you should be looking at an X299 chipset. This is actually quite an old and semi-outdated chipset that is likely to be replaced at some point in the not too distant future. But like I said, if you're buying a new, uh, you know, 10980XE for example, then an X299 chipset is what you're after. If you're going for a Xeon chip, then you should check out Intel's ARC website to work out which of their C series chipsets is going to be right for your CPU. And what about all the ports and connectors? Well, starting off with RAM or random access memory, it's a pretty essential thing to have when building your system. And all of the boards that I've mentioned here all use DDR4 or the fourth generation of double data rate RAM. Now, the mainstream boards that I talked about, so anything with an AM4 socket or LGA 1151, those all use up to four sticks of RAM, but can use less if you're buying a smaller motherboard. The higher end boards, ones that support Threadripper, so STRX4 or the LGA 2066-2011s, they can use up to eight sticks of RAM in a slightly different configuration called quad channel instead of dual channel on these boards. Now what about the PCIe I mentioned? Well that's called a shared bus and it's broken up into a set number of lanes sort of bundled together. So it can either be one lane, two, four, eight, or 16, and the number of lanes will depend on how fast your connection is. Now, you have uh, the PCIe X16 sized slots up at the top, which normally you find graphics cards in, that's the sort of thing that you would put in those sorts of slots, and there is one tricky thing here, these X16 sized slots often aren't actually wired up electrically for full X16 speeds, uh, they're normally wired up for X8 if they're not the very top slot on the motherboard, as your CPU has a fixed number of lanes that can go into it, on Ryzen that's 24, with four of them split going to the chipset and then four going to an M.2 slot, which is actually a form of storage, but is also using the PCIe bus. And then there's normally 16 to split between normally two of the X16 sized slots. Now I know that's already complicated, but unfortunately there is one other layer of complexity when it comes to PCIe, and that is the generations. Now PCIe Gen 3 is pretty much the standard right now. Pretty much any motherboard you can go and buy will have PCIe Gen 3 support, but when you buy an AMD X570 board twinned with a AMD Ryzen third generation processor, you can get PCIe Gen 4 support, which is double the speed of Gen 3, and is especially handy when you do have a compatible M.2 SSD, which can actually be incredibly fast, and uh, like I said, M.2 SSDs fit in M.2 slots, which are these sort of generally small little connectors, and they are a form of storage that you can boot from, you can store your games on if you want to, and all that sort of stuff, and they're incredibly, incredibly fast. Now since we're talking about storage, I do want to cover these ports on the side, they are SATA ports, it's what is slow slowly becoming a more legacy connection. It is definitely older and slower, but the drives that you normally find with SATA ports, which are normally hard drives and your older SATA SSDs, those are generally cheaper than sort of NVMe or M.2 drives, and therefore it's a pretty good trade-off between capacity and price versus speed and throughput. And I think lastly for this video, we have to talk about the power connectors. The power connectors that you need for a motherboard are this large 24 pin connector on the sort of top middle right of the motherboard and then there's also some combination of four or eight pin connectors at the top left of the board that specifically power the CPU. You do need to have those connected although depending on the number of those that are there you normally only need one connected at a minimum so a little bit complicated but generally if you plug them all in you're not doing any harm so 
do that. And one quick final note on the sizing of motherboards. The one I have next to me is called ATX. It's the sort of standard size we generally use. And you can go smaller down all the way to MITX, which is absolutely tiny, and go even bigger as well. The size of your motherboard doesn't matter too much unless you've bought a case that will not fit the motherboard you bought. So do make sure you check the compatibility of the size of your motherboard to the size that your case supports. So that is a quick rundown of sockets, chipsets, ports, and even a bit about sizing on motherboards. If you have any questions, if I didn't explain anything quite clearly enough or really anything at all, leave those in the comments down below and myself or the awesome community that watches these videos will do our best to get back to you and help you understand whatever you're missing. With that said, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon. And if you want to support these videos in more ways than just watching this one, then feel free to check out the links in the description down below. There's a lot of stuff like Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use, massively help me out when you do use them. Or there's merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, really very, very soft, very like it a lot. Uh, there's also Patreon if you want to get cool rewards like ad-free videos and support me directly, and a load of other stuff down there too. Otherwise, you can check out some more videos over there. I'll leave the Tech Explained playlist if you want to check that out, including the CPU and GPU names explained if you want to understand a bit more about that. And let me know in the comments down below if you want to see any more sort of Tech Explained videos like this. If there's anything specific you want to see, do let me know. And otherwise, that is pretty much it. We'll catch you all in the next video.